What's up guys, CP Modder here back with another video. Now with the AMD APU lineup just around the corner when it comes to their new Zen lineup, chances are you may be looking for a budget build or maybe you're just looking to build yourself a budget AMD system. So today we have four decently spec and also two decently priced boards you may want to consider when building your next AIM4 socket Zen based system, whether it be the Zen CPUs or just the Zen APU chipsets. Now once we do get into our list, you may notice that a lot of our selections have fallen into that B350 category in terms of the chipsets, mainly because B350 chipsets offer us the best bang for the buck when it comes to specs and features it offers, but also to coming in at a decent price point. Whilst X370 is definitely your top of the line, however, it does start at around 220 Australian dollars, so it may not necessarily be the cheapest and most budget friendly board. Also too, A320 makes it in here once, but doesn't exactly do a whole lot, mainly because A320 doesn't support overclocking and has a few features disabled that you would really like in a fairly decently specced and decently priced motherboard. Before we do jump into the list, I also do want to make a note that it's not in any particular order, it's just order that I found them on the internet and put them into my list. So number one isn't necessarily the best budget motherboard, rather it's just there. So with that being said, let's jump into our list. Now coming in at number four, we have the Gigabyte GAA320MA-M.2 motherboard. Now this may not have the nicest name and may not be the best looking motherboard, but with an all brown PCB and uninspiring design, we kind of get what we get when it comes to $99. It does deliver actually fairly decent specs, however it is based on the A320 chipset, so don't expect any overclocking anytime soon. However, if overclocking isn't something you're actually interested in, throw in 64 gigs of RAM, a high end video card and a fairly decent Ryzen chip and boom you have a monster of a system and you only need it to pay $99. It also too features M.2 connections and plenty of SATA ports, so really, if you wanted to build yourself a awesome budget workstation, I have to say, this board from Gigabyte definitely does get the job done. Coming in at our third place, we have the ASUS Prime B350M-A motherboard. Now whilst it's definitely a lot better aesthetic looking, it also too features the B350 chipset, which gives us a lot more features and some overclocking if we did want to go ahead and do that. And just like Gigabyte's board, it is also too limited to one video card but also to supports up to 64 gigs of RAM and an M.2 slot, six SATA ports, USB 3 all over the place, and not to mention that this is part of the ASUS Prime series of motherboards, offering us the tech and research from their higher end motherboards at the lower end price point and lower end feature set. With over 400 RAM kits validated and tested for this board, including 8,000 hours of testing, when it comes to reliability and compatibility, this board definitely gets it done. And not to mention it comes in at just 100 and $19, just a few extra dollars over our previous board and definitely gives you a lot better looks, a lot better features and a lot more reliability. So I have to say, number three is definitely a fairly good bang for the buck. And coming in at number two, we have the ASUS Prime B350 Plus motherboard. Now, just like the previous ASUS Prime motherboard, it is part of the Prime sort of family. So everything I said about the previous motherboard also to applies here. However, with that being said, we get a much better looking design, extremely beefy power delivery system with high quality chokes and capacitors, overclocking should be a nice little treat here. We also do have two PCI 16S physical slots, which means we do have support for Crossfire. And as it is a higher tier board, we also do get things from the higher tier families like USB 3.1 10 gigabits per second and also two faster 4X PCIe M.2 slots. There's also two separate silicon for the audio gear and a bunch more that really just takes this board to the next level. And I have to say, it is one of my favorite boards that supports AMD CPUs right now. And if I had to build a build myself, I would be going to this board just no worries. And coming in at $149, it may definitely be on that higher end tier in terms of your budget, just under $150. I have to say, it really delivers a lot of specs and a lot of features that you may really want. And that aesthetic once again, damn, it looks really nice. And coming in at our number one spot in terms of our budget list, whilst it isn't the best budget oriented motherboard, it definitely definitely is the best smallest version of an AMD board and that is the Gigabyte GA AB350N gaming Wi-Fi 
motherboard. And whilst it isn't the cheapest guy coming in at $179 Australian, uh, it does deliver us quite a lot in the small ITX form factor. Just about everything we talked about from all the other previous boards are right here, plus it also too includes a wireless chipset, which is even better here. Again, it runs their B350 chipset, so we can go ahead and do some overclocking, and overall it is really not a bad little guy. Also too, the design is really, really nice in terms of the visual. Supporting DDR4, a full-size video card and everything you need, if you are building a small AMD-based system and you want the best budget motherboard, I definitely have to say this is one of the cheapest options when it comes to an ITX-style motherboard. But with that being said, that is my list of motherboards that I would pick up if I was building a budget AMD system. Definitely some of them are a little bit more budget than the others, but overall definitely they're going to give you the performance you need, the connectivity you need without going over the top like some of the high-end X370 motherboards. Don't get me wrong, they definitely deliver a lot, but at the end of the day, if you're not really going to be taking advantage of the, all the features there, you might as well save some dollars here and get yourself a better video card, better CPU, better RAM, or really better everything else. But otherwise, guys, let me know down in that comment section what your favorite AMD budget motherboard is. Otherwise, if you want to pick up one of these boards, I've linked them all down in that description box so you can pick them up there. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one.